We are at a critical precipice in our society. We must understand, identify, and rectify health inequities. It's critical to address health disparities through individual factors by tackling inequitable economic, political, environmental, neighborhood, and structural factors, which is at the crux of creating a just and equitable society for all. In this video, we will explore health disparities and health equity, and factors that are related to inequitable distribution of health, aging, and Alzheimer's disease. After watching this video, you should be able to identify health disparities and health equity, identify factors related to health disparities and how to reach health equity, specifically focusing on social determinants of health and comorbidities, identify and discuss differences in health rates for Alzheimer's disease, address Alzheimer's disease and related dementia's health disparities through bridging the educational equity gap. When we talk about health disparities, what we're really talking about is unequal outcomes in the population. So we're referring to the fact that some people in the United States are able to maintain good health throughout their life course, while others are not as healthy. And health disparities typically refer to differences regarding specific groups, racial and ethnic minorities, for instance, or people from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. In the United States, research has consistently shown disparities across ethnic and racial groups for cancer, diabetes, and other chronic diseases. In addition, we also observe ethnic and racial disparities for Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease and other related dementia, ADRD, are debilitating conditions that slowly destroy memory thought processes and functions primarily among older adults. Hispanic and African American people are twice as likely to suffer from Alzheimer's disease. This disparity highlights the need to conduct more research in the area of Alzheimer's disease disparities in and for Black, Hispanic, Indigenous, and other people of color. To bridge this gap, although it's critical to look at health disparities and differences in communities, what's even more imperative is to reach health equity. Health equity means that every person in the United States, regardless of their characteristics, their gender, their race or ethnicity, their income levels, or their education, have the same opportunity to live high quality, healthy lives. Examining health disparities is the first step. This process can help us see differences in different groups of people at the systemic level. Specific factors contribute to health disparities, and addressing these factors is also critical to reaching health equity. There are a lot of factors that contribute to health disparities. From my point of view and the research that I'm most interested in, I focus primarily on the places where people live. So I'm very interested in how, where we grow up, where we choose to rent our homes or buy our houses determines the kind of environmental exposures that we have. So even our ability to eat healthy foods, to exercise, to meet up with friends and family and socialize is so highly dependent on where we live. And some of these factors are really outside of people's control. People who live in highly polluted areas don't really choose to have that level of air pollution exposure, but because of other factors like their level of income and where they can and can't buy homes, they might end up in a very polluted neighborhood, whereas another individual might end up in living in a place with very clean air. When we examine health disparities, many times there's this thought in our society that, well, it's the individual. Why don't you just exercise more? Why don't you just eat less fat intakes or increase your sleep intake? But in reality, what is happening and what we do know is that there's these structural systemic factors that are in play that contribute to increased morbidity, increased mortality in underrepresented communities. These disparities are created by long-standing, inequitable distribution of social and economic resources in both African-American and Hispanic communities. In this section, we learn that health disparities refer to differences and or unequal health outcomes between specific groups 
such as racial and ethnic minorities or socioeconomic backgrounds. Health equity means that every person, regardless of their characteristics, their gender, their race or ethnicity, their income levels or their education, have the same opportunity and equal resources to live high quality, healthy lives. Social, political and environmental factors such as equal access to health care, good paying jobs, quality education, affordable housing, healthy foods and safe environments play a critical role in health disparities and equity. So social determinants of health are not just individual factors that influence overall health, but what they are is factors that are more structural and systemic in nature, societal in nature, such as healthful access to good quality food, good paying jobs, great schools for these communities. The risk factors for Alzheimer's disease and dementia are many, including a lot of health-related risk factors. So people who live in more disadvantaged social and physical environments are going to have higher risks for the health determinants of dementia. And racial and ethnic minorities like Black Americans and Latino Americans are at higher risk for poor health outcomes that are related to later risks of developing dementia in older adulthood. When we're examining health disparities, particularly related to Alzheimer's disease, the overwhelming data shows that it really is caused by these social determinants of health, the inequities that we see in society that impacts these health disparities. But to reach health equity in Alzheimer's disease in underserved, under-resourced communities, we have to reach for and strive for equity in these social determinants of health. In this section, we learned that the environment people are born into affects their risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Racial and ethnic minorities are at a high risk for poor health outcomes related to Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. Improving systemic factors such as education, access to health care, job opportunities, as well as eliminating racial discrimination could reduce Alzheimer's disease for disadvantaged communities. There are inequitable differences in illness and deaths between ethnic and racial groups. There is no better example than what we experienced during the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that the COVID-19 pandemic has unfortunately increased health disparities in the United States. We saw, for instance, recently that the loss of life was much higher among Black Americans and even higher among Latinos compared to white Americans. And in fact, what we know is data from California has shown that Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islanders have suffered from actually the highest morbidity and mortality due to COVID-19 compared to non-Hispanic white communities. The ways that COVID-19 impacted my Native Hawaiian Pacific Island community was that families were challenged tremendously. Unemployment was significant because many of our Pacific Islanders were working pre-pandemic at entry-level positions and in entertainment and in hospitality services, which totally shut down during the pandemic and now are slowly regaining their positions. Food shortages were challenges, household many rents, so many of them were displaced. In addition to systemic factors, comorbid conditions may also help to explain disparities in Alzheimer's disease. One of the factors that actually is studied currently but has not been studied quite extensively is a relationship between comorbidities in relation to Alzheimer's disease. And this could be another avenue for explaining the disparities that we see in Alzheimer's disease. I'm interested in how um, Alzheimer's disease and dementia um, differs among ethnic groups as well as between men and women. And so it's important to look at other contributing factors to dementia. Things like diabetes and high blood pressure that can impact the vasculature. Comorbidities are the simultaneous presence of two or more diseases or medical conditions found in a patient such as diabetes, heart disease, and high blood pressure. What we're finding is that potentially these comorbidities are putting people of color at higher risk for Alzheimer's disease. 
But we should also think about not just who has the disease, but how they're living with the disease and how long they'll live with the disease. So while dementia might be higher among these populations, researchers have also found that they will live more of their older adult years with dementia. And what this means is that the person living more years with dementia is going to spend more time potentially with health issues and with a need for caregiving from family members and for medical care. In this section, we learned that the COVID-19 pandemic exposed health disparities, particularly among people who are African-American, Hispanic, Native American, or Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islanders. Comorbidities are two or more diseases in a patient, such as diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. Social determinants of health also contribute to these comorbidities. Having a comorbid condition has been linked to Alzheimer's disease diagnosis. African American, Hispanic, and other ethnic groups are potentially more at risk for comorbidities due to lower socioeconomic living conditions and in turn, are at higher risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. For Alzheimer's disease and related dementias, there are a variety of strategies that can help close the health equity gap. So the strategies for closing the health equity gap for Alzheimer's disease and related dementia, ADRD, it's actually very complicated. There's really no easy answer. It really needs to be a multi-pronged, multidisciplinary approach. I think it's exciting to be able to look at what are the gaps in the field and use my creativity and my knowledge of what are the gaps uh, to fill those gaps and to be able to figure out solutions to the problem problems that we currently have. There's quite a bit of mistrust in underrepresented communities. So there's mistrust in science, mistrust in research, and that has to do with historical injustices that have occurred in these communities. And so we need to train diverse underrepresented communities, underrepresented students to address ADRD, to conduct research, not only to increase the knowledge and awareness of what ADRD is in communities, but to also provide a new viewpoint that hasn't been there in this area of research. In this section, we learned that there is a degree of mistrust in both science and research for healthcare in under-resourced communities. Training biomedical researchers who have a strong understanding of cultural and structural factors affecting diverse communities may contribute to different and important perspectives in the field. Training more students from historically underrepresented backgrounds to become experts can help address mistrust and also contribute to novel perspectives in the field of Alzheimer's disease research. I would tell students that are venturing into science to be resilient. There will be a lot of times that you will be rejected, um, but do not let this discourage you and keep moving forward. This knowledge has kept me going through the difficult times that often occur in science and has kept my eyes on the prize.